In one of our most popular videos, we looked at the research on how quickly you lose fitness when taking a break from running. I'll link to that video in the description if you haven't seen it. But what about strength training? How quickly do you lose your gains from strength training if you have to take some time off for injury, vacation, or even as you taper for races? Well, that's what we're going to look at in today's video. I'll show you what the science says about how quickly you lose gains from strength training, if there are any positives that come with taking a break, and how to structure your training to get back any losses as quickly as possible. The research on how taking a break from strength training affects fitness gains. The first study we'll examine is a fairly straightforward analysis of strength training and detraining. A group of 14 sedentary men did lower leg strength training three to four times a week for three months. They then returned to being sedentary again for another three months. The subjects had the strength and explosive power of their legs tested at the outset, midpoint, and end. Unsurprisingly, the subjects added a significant amount of muscular strength. They also lost much or all of it after three months of inactivity. Interestingly though, after a short time away of the strength training, the subject's muscular power under no load increased markedly. The authors proposed that the men retained some of the strength training muscular benefits and lost some of the highly specialized adaptions for moving heavy weights. The resulting muscle composition executed less inhibited and more powerful movements. The detraining results, the improved muscular power and the velocity and the loss of slow moving muscle fibers might be of use for a runner who requires just these characteristics to perform. But the subjects in this study were sedentary. How does this type of experiment play out in highly trained athletes? This was the question asked of a paper from East Carolina University in a 1993 study. Their study looked at changes in strength after 12 highly trained power athletes, power lifters and D1 football players took two weeks of rest. While they experienced only minor changes in their actual strength abilities on the bench, squat, there were moderate to significant decreases in the size of their highly trained fast twitch muscle fibers. Conversely, their hormonal profile became more favorable. The growth hormone and testosterone levels increased while levels of cortisol and the stress hormone decreased. The research suggested that with careful manipulation, this type of rest could be beneficial and allow athletes to advance their performances. On the other hand, we need to be cautious not to rest for too long. It appears that most highly trained areas of an athlete's muscular system, the fast twitch fibers in this case, are the first to lose their strength. Finally, a review article from 2001 attempts to synthesize some older research that confirms the previous findings we discussed and draws some additional useful conclusions about strength training. Within the first two to four weeks away from strength training, few changes occur. Specialized athletes like runners, rowers, and power athletes must continue sport-specific training like running for runners, otherwise they may lose their specialized fitness muscle fibers. For example, in endurance athletes, the size of slow twitch fibers, muscle fibers declines. For both groups, the muscular strength fibers appear not to change for up to one month. That's some great news for anyone that needs to take a break for a short period of time for an injury or vacation. And it provides some essential advice for how to apply this to strength training during the taper process. From a muscular strength perspective, continuing to lift or do strength training exercises until your big race is unnecessary. From a recovery perspective, it may make sense to intentionally reduce strength training for a few weeks before a big competition to retain your muscular power. This, in the more favorable hormonal profile, reduced highly specific inhibitory mechanisms could help you bring your performance to the next level. So here's some specific advice. Anywhere from one week to two weeks before your race, start to reduce to to the total volume of your strength training slightly. For example, if you were doing three sets of each exercise, reduce to one or two sets. Keep the weight hard, but comfortable. You don't need to be concerned about progression, just providing your muscles a stimulus. Maintain your normal weekly routine up until about three to four days before the race, where you can eliminate all strength work just to be extra cautious from a recovery perspective. Keep these guidelines in mind as you plan a tapering strategy. This should give you the best of both worlds, the muscular power gains from strength training and technique and specificity from running training. If you're interested, our strength training for runners guide is based on all this research we conduct and experiences from our own training as elite runners. We show you exactly how, which we show you exactly which days to strength train, how to progress based on race goals and provide the most optimal and specific exercises for injury prevention and running performance. 
It has prescriptions for how to add running specific strength work to your training for distances from 5K to the marathon, including how to continually progress your strength work and how to taper. It's a step-by-step -step system for each day of the week for any race distances with videos, how to's, when to schedule, and more. I'll put a link in the description for you to learn more. What questions do you have about how quickly you lose gains from strength training? Let us know in the comments and we'll try our best to answer.